Need LASIK? Trust the experienced team at the LASIK Center at Evergreen Eye Center. No glasses, no contacts, no limits. What will you do? LASIK at evergreen.com. And every once in a while, we do a special segment on this show called a Second Date Update Update. Yeah! Where we contact a couple who has appeared on the show in the past to find out what's going on with them now. Are they still together? Are they not together? Are they hungry? What? What? I hope they're not hungry. I don't know that we've ever updated on their hunger level. <laughs> well, all, all I know is if they are hungry, I don't have any food for them. So I hope they're not hungry. Okay, I hope oh, not okay. too, buddy. I think we'll be okay in that category. <laughs> okay. I mean, unless I'm they're hungry for love. Nervous about it. You never know what could happen, but people that we call today had one of the most touching stories from oh. the past year, and we were dying to find out what happened. We'll play the audio for you and then talk to the couple immediately following Yay! in your second date update update oh. right now. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal's second date update. I'm honestly stumped as to why the woman on the phone for a second date update today isn't getting a call back. I mean, usually when you follow somebody across state lines, no big deal. What? Yeah, they usually appreciate that when you just show up unannounced somewhere, right? And now we're going to stalk the guy again by calling him on a second date? Her name is Abigail. Abigail, what's up? Hi, guys. Okay, he's already made you sound creepy right from the (laughs) get-go. I'm not creepy. I'm just a bit confused. Okay. Sometimes there's a thin line between creepy and confused. (laughs) I've been a victim of that many times. (laughs) You have a pretty interesting situation, Abigail. Why don't you tell everybody, first of all, the guy that you want to call, what's his name? Brian. Brian. And how did you meet Brian? Well, you know, I'm a little leery on going on online dates and meeting guys on dating websites because they're usually either nuts ugly or smelly or just not just not god it sounds like so many great options i don't know why you're so upset about this but you know i tr- i gave it a shot one more time and i met brian and i gotta tell you like we hit it off immediately it went from zero to 60 in virtually no time so you liked his aroma he had a good aroma a good scent. <laughs> i mean from when i could smell over the phone he was great okay. oh say so you're saying it went from zero to 60 before you guys even met in person Right. I mean, it was oh. instant attraction via conversation. Wow. Um, his profile picture looked great. And then I did a little more digging and found his Facebook profile, and I realized it's really what he looks like. Uh-huh. And hey, did you get his tax returns? It sounds like you put in a lot of effort. <laughs> if I'd done a little more digging, maybe. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a lot of pressure to put on a date when you've been disappointed so many times. Were you worried about that? I was, and that's why I did my due diligence, and we talked for hours. I mean, Aww. there was nothing I couldn't discuss with him. He texted me at least five times a day. Oh, I and love that. How long was this going on before you guys actually decided to meet in person? Just about a month. Whoa, that's a long time. Yeah. I really wanted to see him, but the thing was, he lived two states away. Oh. So the whole logistics of meeting each other was really difficult. I see. I was going to say, like, what took so long? Did that make sense? (laughs) But I thought we had kicked it off so well. I wanted to do a grand gesture of romance. And one night when we were chit-chatting, he was telling me his best friend's birthday was that weekend Mm -hmm. and where they were going to be and what the plans were. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I flew down and surprised him? Whoa, for for your first meeting? I mean, we had chatted for so long. This was inevitable that one of us was going to fly in to meet the other. But a surprise and just showing up is a whole different ballgame if you don't know him that well yet. But it could, I mean, I could see where it could pay off. Like, it could be an amazing thing or it could be really bad. So how was it when you saw him for the first time? I just started drooling. He was so gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe that's why he's not calling you back. You just showed up randomly out of the blue with drool all over you. (laughs) It's a good point. And how did he react? Was he drooling as well? Was it just a big spit fest? He was kind of taken aback. I basically came up behind him and tapped his shoulder, and he turned around, and he got white as a ghost. He was shocked. Of course. Okay, wait. (laughs) Set the scene. Where were you guys when you tapped him on the shoulder? Were you at the birthday party? Yeah, I I showed up at the restaurant where the birthday party was. Whoa. Yeah, that's a very bold move. 
Well, because I didn't know where he lived, so this is the only way I could get in contact. Oh, with him. So, so what did he do? I mean, after he recovered from the initial shock, did he hug you? Did he kiss you? I mean, the first thing he did was say, what are you doing here? And I told him, I thought it'd be a really cool surprise to, you know, shock you and be here and thought it'd be really romantic. Yeah. And then for most of the night, I ended up speaking to his friends and not much to him. Oh, oh, my oh wow. God. But you got to understand, I, I mean, I knew he had to speak to other people. It was his best friend's birthday. So I, I let it go. I figured, hey, that's what he has to do. So wait, mm-hmm. hold on. Like, how was he introducing you to his friends? Well, he really wasn't. I mean, uh, the one or two times that I'd bump into him, somebody would come up to him and say, oh, and you are. And, and he would say, oh, this is a friend of mine. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Ouch. Well, and I thought... Well, you know, it is really new. We haven't really told people about us. So I get it. He wanted to keep it on the down low. I get that. Yeah. I'm starting to worry about you. I mean, after the birthday party, what happened? Well, when we got to the end of the night, people started leaving. And it was basically he and I and his best friend. And I started talking to him. And I said, well, I'm here now. And he said, how long are you here for? And I thought that was odd that he would ask me when I'm leaving when we just met. (laughs) Uh-huh. Yeah. But I said to him, I'm here till tomorrow evening. Maybe we can have lunch or brunch tomorrow. and Or maybe even right now, let's go for another drink or a cup of coffee. Hey. And he said he was really busy. He had a lot of commitments the next day. But oh I, I was like, okay, maybe you can spare an hour. I did fly all the way out here. Uh-huh. He said, mm, you know what? We'll set up a date for when I can either fly out to you or what? you can fly out here again. Were you oh, crushed? Wow. So you- I was crushed until he said, let's see, we can figure out a time to meet up again. Oh, no. So I no. thought there was some hope there. No. That, you know, maybe he really was busy the next day. Yeah. I don't know. You, you know are you were coming. So. You are so nice to this man. Well, he's something special. Aww, how many times have you tried to get... for you. Oh, no. <laughs> how many times have you tried to get a hold of him since that weekend? It's been a week so far, and I only heard from him once, and that also through text. So it's not like it was before. Oh, my gosh. And you're okay. sure he's single, right? From what I understand, I didn't see any rings on his finger, and I didn't see any other woman around. Okay. That's good. Okay. Well, we'll play a song, come back, call him, and then get your second date update, okay? Okay. All right. Hang on. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the Mornings. Second date update. If you're just tuning in for today's second date update, it's the kind of thing that movies are made about. Hmm. Oh, Abigail uh, is on the phone, and Abigail met the man of her dreams online. And they chatted back and forth every single day, every single night, for weeks hmm. until Abigail decided to show up unannounced. <laughs> At a birthday party, she flew all the way there to surprise him, tapped him on the shoulder, and he turned around and she said, Abigail's home. No. <laughs> That's not what oh happened. my God, poor Abigail. <laughs> I think I've seen that movie before. It's scary. <laughs> happened. That is sort of what happened. Abigail did surprise this dude that she'd been talking to online. They live in different states and she actually showed up to a birthday party that he was at unannounced and was hoping that everything would go great. But when she got there and surprised him, he was kind of weird and sort of ignored her the rest of the night and they haven't really talked since. Abigail? Hi. Yeah. Sounds just like what you said, Jubal. I mean, very similar. I'm really not a stalker, I promise. (laughs) Well, I have a whole different scenario in my head, Abigail. (laughs) Abigail, you're so sweet. It just makes me so angry because it sounds like you guys really connected and he really led you down this path. And he's just a jerk. I don't know how else to say it appropriately. Well, but she did show up out of the blue unannounced, like from states away. That could creep a guy out. But he was giving her the wrong signals, man. I really got the feeling that we had the connection and... He would have loved this romantic gesture. All right. Well, we'll find out. I'm going to dial his phone number right now and see if we can talk to him and get your second date update, okay? Okay. Oh, okay. gosh. She's Hold so on. Nice. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Can I speak to Brian, please? Yeah, this is Brian. Who's this? Hey, what's up, man? How are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning. I'm sorry, who? Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning. <laughs> weird ways, I know. Sounds weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I figured you wouldn't. That's fine. Uh, Brook and Jubal in the morning is a morning radio show. Uh, okay. 
Okay. And that's the end of the call. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for answering, Brian. I'm calling you because one of our listeners actually asked us to reach out to you. All right. You sure you got the right, Brian? I'm I'm pretty sure I do. I'll check. Do you know uh, a girl named Abigail? Yeah. Okay. Well, we know a girl named Abigail as well, and she's really confused because she thought you guys had a great relationship for a few weeks until she decided to just fly into town and surprise you, and she said you seemed kind of cold to her, and now you haven't really talked to her since. <laughs> uh, you can understand why that she's going to like any length possible to get some sort of answer. Like If you put that much energy into seeing someone, mm-hmm. and then they suddenly shut down, like that's got to be really confusing. Let me get this straight, then. She had you guys to reach out to contact me. That's what you're telling me? Yes, because uh-huh. you won't really give her an answer, and you're kind of being cold. This is... Now, this is crazy, man. It's not really that crazy. I mean, she just wants an answer. I, I just can't believe that she's doing all this just to get in touch with me. Yeah, but you guys went she... from, like, texting, like, five times a day for a whole month to nothing. Yeah, and she liked you a lot, Brian. And talking to you right now, I can understand why. You seem like a sweet dude. I like you, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I normally am, but not when, like, radio shows call me. I have to, like, stick into my personal life. I, we get that. We do. Can you just tell us anything? At least we can talk to her and be like, oh, he just wasn't really feeling you when he saw you in person or something like that? Well, don't tell her that because, I mean, that's not true. Um, really? Yeah, no, yeah. I uh, actually, I really do like her a lot. There's just stuff going on that I just don't want to get into. Oh, you're in a relationship. I knew it. I told her yeah, that. I but, told her that you're, she swore she thought you were single. No, I, I know I'm definitely single. That's not it. Oh, okay. Really? No, it's just, I thought what we, what we had going on was good. I mean, I kind of liked, I guess, the distance aspect of it. And then for her to just randomly show up at a friend's birthday party, I'm not really expecting that at all. But why did you spend all night avoiding her? I mean, at some point, if you say that you really like her. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, it just got too real for me, having her right there. What? Too real, like, you like talking to her online and on the phone, but to realize you could actually touch a person was strange? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's not, not necessarily that. It's just there's other stuff. But I understand there's other stuff. But right now, all I understand is you like her a lot. It shocked you that she showed up. And then there's stuff. Like, how <laughs> is that a message to give to her to help her understand why you're not talking to her anymore? <sighs> You know what? Whatever. I don't. I don't care anymore. Um, I just. I need a kidney transplant. Um, Whoa. Whoa. What? Yeah. Oh, that's serious. Whoa. Yeah. Way to take things down, Brian. <laughs> I mean, you guys asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, usually these things end up like, oh, I thought they smelled funny, or they puked in my back seat. Yeah. Man, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So is it just that you don't want to get involved in a relationship because you obviously have some serious health stuff that you need to concentrate on pretty much you know i just i don't want to drag her into this you know what i mean i feel like this is kind of my battle right now by her showing up i realized you know that she really does like me a lot and um i'm just not wanting her to be that close to being around all this like stuff going on oh i feel so horrible i thought these awful things about you and now yeah look at you brooke seriously dude (laughs) i am sorry uh, it, it, it's all good. It's, it's not a big deal, I guess. <laughs> so did you not tell her about your situation when you guys were chatting online and on the phone and stuff? No. You know, I, I didn't want to tell her this, you know what I mean? Like, I, mm-hmm. I thought if we kept it from a distance, you know, we can keep it upbeat and not have to kind of, like, talk about all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I just, I really just enjoyed her conversation. And it, sometimes, you know, when there's a lot of bad stuff going on in your life, to have somebody there to kind of just talk to you and, you know, just kind of laugh with and stuff like that, it kind of brings you up. So I didn't want to, like, kind of bring her down by uh-huh. right. you know, transplant. Yeah, and you were able to um, escape your own stuff, too. Hmm. You know, Brian, you're, you're kind of making this difficult on me because this would normally be the point where I'd try to deliver a witty line and mm-hmm. then tell you that the person is on the other line listening to the conversation. <laughs> but I don't have any witty lines, so I'm just going to connect you two so you can talk, okay? Wait, is she, is she on the other line now, or what do you mean by connect us? Yeah, she's listening to this phone call and wants to talk to you. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Are you kidding? Like, I just said I didn't even want her to know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Unfortunately, she does know now. <laughs> Abigail, are you there? Hi, Brian. Hey. Sorry, I didn't really want you to find out this way. No, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm, sh- I'm shocked. You don't, 
I mean, you don't have to say anything. I mean, I, I, I know that I didn't tell you, so there's no way you could have known. It's just, I don't know. I didn't know how connected I was going to get with you, and then I just, I guess, I, I got worried about actually telling you. So. But I want you to know something. I care about you more than you can imagine. I'm here if you want to talk. I'm here if you need me to make you laugh. I'm there for you. Uh, I, I really appreciate that because, I mean, I, I don't know. I got scared once you got down there and, you know, actually seeing you and it made it seem too real. And I just, I guess I, I pushed you away a little bit and didn't want to, you know, get too close. Listen, get close. If you need me to do anything or help you or just put a smile on your face whenever you need me. Yeah, I just, you're such a sweet person. I don't want you to get all caught up in this and then something go wrong. Right now, I'm on a waiting list. I'm not, you know, there's no guarantee of when I'm going to be able to get the transplant. And honestly, Abigail, uh, I really care about you. And I really want to, you know, keep you in my life. But at the same time, because I care about you so much, I feel like I can't. I don't know. I'm just really torn right now. I mean, I'm willing to take a blood test. Is there any way maybe I'm compatible in some way? Whoa. Whoa. No, it, it, I don't want you to do that, Abby. I really... Listen, this is, this is about kindness. This is the reason why I was put in your life. The, the, chances, the chances are so slim that that's even possible. I don't, Brian, I don't want you to have to go through with that. But, Brian, there's always a chance. It may be slim, but it's still there. Yeah, but it's just... I, I can't... I can't think about you actually giving up your kidney for me. I can't think about you doing that. I don't. I don't want that to happen. Well, I got two. <laughs> so, good point. Good point. Yep. So uh, I can I, give one up. I, it's like a spare tire. Uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. At least give me the chance or the opportunity to look into this. Consider it. You have to consider it. Brian, how about this? How about we send Abigail out to you and you guys can spend the weekend together. You can hang out. You can go on a few dates and you can even discuss a possible kidney transplant. That's, that I've never had to say heavy. that in a second date update before, but I'm saying it. So <laughs> I can't believe this is actually happening right now. Oh, my God. Would you be interested in that, Brian? Just checking things out? Um, I don't know about the whole kidney transplant, but the date would be awesome. I would, I would love to go on a date. Yes. Okay, Brian, so that's yes. a yes. Yeah, definitely. Ah! Yay! I'm happy to hear you say that, Brian. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, that I'll actually be seeing you. This has been a really weird second date update. Normally, yeah. it's the dude who's begging to put his organ in a woman. <laughs> and... Organ jokes. <laughs> you had to, didn't you? I couldn't help it, yeah. <laughs> Broken Jubal in the morning. That was a second date update from six months ago, and we're on Ooh. the phone with Brian and Abigail for a second date update update right now. Oh my gosh. Hey, Brian and Abigail, how are you doing? Hey, hey how guys. you doing? Oh my hey. God, I've never been so excited to get an update update. I know. Yeah, what's the update on your story? I can't thank you guys enough for you know bringing us together, flying me out to see Brian. It was great. He showed me around the city. We got to know each other better. It was awesome. Oh, really so, yeah. She even she even made a shirt and wore it that said, "This guy needs a kidney" with like an arrow pointing towards no! him. So, yeah. so that, was, that was pretty good. That's kind of cute. So the spark is still there. For me, there's more than a spark. <laughs> For you, Brian, or are you Brian? You're like, oh my god, dude. She would not go away the whole week. <laughs> no, no, it's. It's uh, it's definitely it's been great. I really appreciate you guys doing this for us. It's just we're you know trying to still take it a little bit slow with, with everything that's going on, you know. Yeah, but you're talking in us, and that it means you're in a relationship. Yeah. Well, uh, we're not we're not quite calling it a relationship oh. right now. Okay. Okay. Oh. So what are you then? I mean, we're um, we're definitely really good friends. I mean. I think we're, yeah. we're definitely really, really good friends right now. And just trying Absolutely. to see where it goes. Okay. Good friends who do it. I like yeah, that. Right? <laughs> Those are the best kind of friends. Are you kidding me? <laughs> friends with benefits. Well, <laughs> here's the situation that we're dealing with, to be totally honest. Okay. Um, you know, I went through extensive testing, and I found out that I am a match. My oh, kidney my is a God. match. What? For a awesome. kidney replacement? Yeah, a match for a kidney replacement. Whoa! What are the chances? And in six weeks, we have the operation scheduled. Oh, yay! 
Oh, that makes me Great teary. News. I know. Yeah, and you know it's it's scary and exciting all at the same time. But yeah, we are scheduled for the operation. You're gonna give him a kidney, and you're in the friend zone. <laughs> 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 I have a feeling, Brian, you're okay with that, right? Yeah, no. No, like I said, it's just, I don't know. We we didn't want to get, like, too serious before the transplant and everything, you know. I mean, it's kind of an emotional decision, you know, mm-hmm. and and she's doing this for me, and it's great. But, like, I don't want her to be, like, holding my kidney hostage or something if we get in an argument. <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> Smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. But it's definitely it's still going great. Yeah, and, you know, once the surgery is done and everything is successful, maybe we'll see how it goes after. Great! Ooh. Well, that's good! Yeah, pretty excited <laughs> and scared. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is definitely this and... is really great. Like, I really appreciate you guys helping us with this whole thing because I don't know that we'd be, you know, going through with this and, and being so close that we are now if it wasn't for you guys helping us Aww. out. I mean... Sure, well, I'm, I'm glad you found a match, and hopefully you guys can turn it into something even better than just a really good friendship. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And no pressure, though. Like, even if the relationship thing doesn't work out, like you two have such a bond together that Mm -hmm. you really will be tied together in some way for the rest of your lives. Well, he'll technically have a piece of me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Brian, if you ghost her after she gives you a kidney, you are officially the worst person in the world. (laughs) No, it's not going to be. It's not going to be like that. Okay, good. That's awesome. Congratulations, (laughs) both of you. Thanks, guys. Thank you you for everything. Brooke and Jubal in the morning.